Oh, I wonder if that's Saturn. What if the sky was a person? Saturn would look so great in a floor-length dress. Jupiter would for sure be a dill. Turn all nine planets into people. It's just nine planets. It wouldn't be that much work. Turn them into characters. Dude, that's it. I can't go outside anymore. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Do you guys ever sit and think about the fact that we're all just living on a floating rock hurling through space, 93 million miles away from a flaming sphere of death? Yeah, me neither. But dadgum, do I love space. I mean, nothing about it makes sense. I mean, if you're like a scientist or an astrophysicist, maybe it does to you, but I don't care. You're not my demographic. To me, nothing about this seems possible. And I just love that. Here are my top three favorite space facts. Number one. Nemesis, the hypothetical binary star that's supposed to be the sun's evil twin or something. It's not even real star. Scientists were just so desperate to explain mass extinctions that they were like, yeah, maybe there's a giant evil infrared star on the edge of our galaxy causing mass extinctions every 26 million years. Number two. White holes are the theoretical antithesis to black holes and instead of sucking in light and matter, they just barf it up. And at one point, scientists thought, hey, maybe if, you know, black holes are what suck everything in, white holes spew all of that stuff out. White holes aren't proven to be real, and that wouldn't be the case even on a mathematical simulated level. But oh boy, wouldn't that be the coolest thing if it were real? Number three. Europa is one of the moons of Jupiter, and it has a water ice crust, and scientists believe there might be an actual water ocean underneath the surface. And if that is the case, it would theoretically be able to facilitate extraterrestrial life. And just think about all of the weird sea creatures and beasties that could be living under there. What if they gain space travel, huh? It'd be like in the first Avengers movie with all the Chitari riding in on the big space bugs. What if there's space bugs living under the ocean in one of the moons of Jupiter? Do you ever think about that late at night? Alright, I'm done. And some of this is probably misinformation. I'm not a scientist. My point being, space is crazy. And some of these things are just begging for me to turn them into weird characters. So as you might have guessed, yes, this is the first installment in my quest to turn all nine planets into characters. And yes, I am including Pluto. I wouldn't leave a dog out of this. So of course we are starting with Mercury, Venus, and Earth. And I chose gods and goddesses as the fantasy nonsense thing to turn them into because with their names and the lore, you know, it just makes sense. So in terms of clothing, I definitely want to pull from traditionally fantasy-based clothing like armor and gowns. But I also wanted to venture a lot into sci-fi, so I pulled a lot from Star Wars, specifically Padme's wardrobe and movies like The Fifth Element and Blade Runner, and also from various street fashion and runway looks. The goal here is to mix the more modern, sci-fi, high fashion look with something that feels more regal and grounded in historical fantasy. I'm also doing that so that I can take this series in a different direction than what Lavender Town did with her renditions of planets as characters. So without further ado, Let's thumbnail. So I surprisingly had a pretty difficult time coming up with ideas for these characters. I began with research about characteristics of the planets to get some basic ideas about who these characters would be, and I settled on a few base ideas, but unfortunately I had significantly fewer ideas for Mercury than I had for the others, so a lot of the thumbnailing process was pretty trial and error. But once I kind of decided to focus on Venus and Earth first, I came up with ideas for those two planets pretty quickly, and some of those ideas were able to translate to Mercury. In the end, I think I was able to come up with some pretty interesting base concepts for all three of them, and I think they also work pretty well as a little group too. We're going to kick the designs off by focusing on Mercury, but first, if you're by any chance wondering what tools I use to thumbnail my illustrations, I'm using Procreate in my iPad. I'm trying to use it a little bit more lately because I'm still new to Procreate and I'm trying to expand what I'm capable of on the iPad, which is why I've been checking out Jerem Vogel's class, Digital Illustration, Learn to Use Procreate, which is available through this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for about two years now and from illustration and character design classes to things like sewing techniques, I've picked up tons of helpful information that I didn't even know I needed. Since I'm still so new to Procreate and it's such an extensive program, Jerem's class has been really helpful. He walks you through the entire process of one of his illustrations from canvas setup to finished product, and literally 30 seconds into the first lesson, I figured out how to do something that I had been looking for for a while. And along the way, I picked up a lot of helpful tips like how to create color palettes, customize gesture controls, and how to properly use the selection tool, which is a tool that I fight with on a frequent basis. It's always just really illuminating to learn about a program from someone who's so experienced with it because they just press a button and you're like, 
I've been looking for that. So if you'd like to check out Jerem's class or one of the many other classes Skillshare offers, right now is the perfect opportunity to invest in your creative passion, whether it's a new hobby, a new career, or launching your small business. Because for a limited time, you can receive 50% off a full year Skillshare subscription, making it their best deal of the year. Plus, Skillshare is a great way to take advantage of Black Friday sales because it's not about more consumption, more clutter, more stuff. It's a purchase for your passions and creative growth and a wonderful way to gain practical knowledge for yourself or a loved one. So invest in yourself this holiday season and take advantage of Skillshare's best offer of the year. For a limited time only, use my link to get 50% off your Skillshare subscription. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring my mission to personify nine space rocks. Now, let's get back to it. So we are starting off with Mercury, who, like I said, was the character that I struggled with the most, mostly due to the fact that I don't find Mercury to be all that interesting of a planet. Sorry, Mercury. Mercury is the smallest official planet in our solar system, it's closest to the sun, and is one of the solid planets as opposed to being gaseous. The surface geography is speculated to be similar to that of our moon, and scientists think it used to have a magma ocean at one point. It's supposedly quite volcanic, although we're not really sure how many of those volcanoes are currently active, but the surface does show evidence of quite a few low-profile shield volcanoes. It also has an extremely thin atmosphere, so it doesn't have much of a weather system and isn't as hot as Venus, despite being closer to the sun since its atmosphere doesn't retain heat. It's one of two planets in our solar system that have no moons and is named after the Roman messenger god and god of commerce. So yeah, not a ton to go off of, considering it's mostly just a giant craterous rock, which to be fair, basically all planets are giant craterous rocks, but some of them are more colorful than others. The surface of Mercury is gray, despite all of the cool enhanced images that you can find on the internet. So I took some liberties with Mercury and honestly, all these planets and decided to design a little bit more based off field and make them super grounded in science. This will probably change as I move on to the planets with more unique characters characteristics, but yeah. So I firstly wanted to decide on a gender for these characters, so I did some research on which planets have masculine energy, feminine energy, or somewhere in between. And based on my research, Mercury had both, so I decided to make my version of Mercury non-binary and give them a mix of masculine and feminine design language. I also decided to use some of the images of Mercury where the colors have been altered as my base color palette, so that might be cheating a little bit, but hey, it looks pretty. I'm not here to design a gray rock. So I went in a pretty sci-fi slash high fashion direction with this character, and I was really inspired by the material of these jackets since it reminded me of the color palette I was going for, and I also really liked the shape of the shoulders, so that was a big jumping off point for this look. Along with this gown, which I absolutely love the vibe of, it's basically exactly what I had in mind in terms of draping fabric, so I went for something similar, but went for more of a cloaked silhouette to give it more masculine edge, but still gave the outfit a bit of a butt skirt look to balance in some femininity. From there, I just painted in lots of different colorful patterns to match my color and and also added little pockets of stars and sparkles onto the fabric as well. For their main clothing, I went for a sort of two-piece shoulder piece, tube top, and pants situation and tried to use a lot of bold abstract shapes all around. Again, my sheep language was a little limited because I feel like planet geography is pretty much just craters, hills, mountains, you know. But I tried to allude to sharp, jagged rocks with the shape of the shoulder pads and the little hip pieces on the pants and generally kept all the shapes boxy or sharp. To allude to their namesake, and Mercury. I also added little sharp spurs on the back of their boots as a nod to the wings Mercury is usually associated with, and did the same with the little funky glasses I gave them. This feels very street fashion to me, very Yassify and Geordie LaForge, and I kind of love them. I mean, if you were that close to the sun, you'd probably need some sunglasses too, so this was a very practical decision. The glasses also got some little stars cascading down on the side to match their earrings, and I know I basically used the same design element in my last video, but shh! It's cute, so I don't care. I also made a few notable changes from my original concept for this design to make them feel a little bit more otherworldly by changing their pants and shoes to bell bottoms and big old chunky space boots. I just feel like it fits the aesthetic better. And most importantly, I also gave them an extra set of arms for no particular reason other than forearm better than two arm, and it also looks cool. I also tried to base their build on the idea that Mercury is pretty small, so they're really slender and lanky, and I also feel like their height would be like very short, probably like 5'2 or 5'2. 5'3", and I can say that because I'm 5'3". So honestly, my next two ladies would probably be absolutely towering above them. Overall, I really love how their design came out. It's way cooler than I expected considering I was in a total brain fog going into this. And also feel free to speculate on backstories for these characters in the comments because I didn't really have time to do that this week. Next up is Venus, and like Mercury, I had a slightly difficult time coming up with ideas for this character, but I kind of figured out what I was doing once I chose an image 
image to base the colors on. So I went for more of a fiery orange aesthetic for Venus because, oh boy, she is hot. Venus is the second closest planet to the sun and is sometimes referred to as the Earth's sister or twin because they have a similar size and composition. Venus is also volcanic with around 167 speculated active volcanoes. And by contrast to Mercury, it also has a pretty dense atmosphere, which gives it a crazy weather system, including extremely high temperatures of up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit and extreme temperature shifts between its light and dark side. I've also read that it can rain sulfuric acid and it, quote, snows a few different types of metal? Like, excuse me? It snows metal. And because of the volcanic activity on Venus, scientists also speculate there to be a decent amount of heat lightning. Wow. Like a Mercury, Venus is the only other planet in our solar system not to have any moons, so I'd say a good bit of interesting stuff is happening on Venus. Venus is of course named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty and is often associated with feminine energy. So surprise, surprise, I went in a femme direction with this design. So once I kind of settled on colors and the general vibe, everything clicked into place, and the biggest piece of inspiration for this look was this beautiful orange dress that gives off a soft turquoise reflection. I thought it would be perfect to tie both into my main color inspiration, which was these bright orange images of Venus, and my secondary color inspo, which was these images where Venus looks a little bit more cloudy, sporting hints of blue and green where you can see bits of the weather patterns on the surface. So I designed a more showgirly take on the orange dress with a slightly different silhouette, and I gave it some weird shoulder pieces to allude to its mountains and volcanic surface, although I'm not sure how well they translate looking at them now. They look a little bit stupid, but it's fine. The main dress piece is essentially a leotard and a large billowing skirt accented with a variety of decorative armor. And since Venus is also the brightest planet visible in Earth's sky, I tried to give the armor and jewelry a grand sort of sparkly motif. Almost like the sun, but I tried to design it more along the lines of bright light rays. And I also gave her the sailor moon hair because just, I couldn't help it. I almost wanted to give her a bit of a camp aesthetic, sort of inspired by art of space girls that you'd see in the 60s or 70s because I just felt like that was fun. And I also already went for kind of an avant-garde 1970s look with Mercury, so I wanted to tie them in together a little bit. And speaking of tying them in together to round it out and to unify her colors with Mercury a little bit, I gave her some pattern tights and some long gloves, kind of trying to emulate some of the cloud patterns and the colors I saw in these images. I felt like it was a good balance of the harsh volcanic surface Surface with the cloudy exterior that you can see in some images. And finally, because space, I also added lots of sparkles and reflections all over the ensemble to once again match Mercury and give it a very celestial feel. Overall, I really like the end product. I definitely feel like she looks like a goddess, even though I kind of wish I had a bit more time to research Venus and tie it in because I feel like this planet's geology is just wild. And last but not least, we have the girl boss herself, Earth. I feel like I probably don't have to explain the composition and characteristics of Earth too much, seeing as how you live here. Anyways, Earth is of course the third planet from the sun. We have lots of weird stuff here like volcanoes and lightning and deep fried memes. And Earth is unique for being the only planet in our solar system to sustain life, allegedly. And she looks absolutely bonkers from space. So I decided to go for a femme design once again for Earth since it's often referred to as Mother Earth. And I also wanted to play with the idea of it being Venus's sister. So I kind of just went wild with this design and did all of the predictable things because oh boy is that fun and I've also just been really looking forward to this one. So I basically wanted to design a dress that feels alive and moving and reflects what earth looks like from space. So I based the general shape and idea around a lot of these flowy gowns that have weird tailored shapes but still feel natural and organic. And I also took inspiration from this gown where bits of fabric are twisted and draped across the body and tried to translate that into flowy clouds with breaks in them that reveal pockets of the earth's surface like the ocean and in various planes. I gave the dress sort of an hourglass shape with lots of dramatic curves without giving it too much of a defined structure to give it more of a soft feminine energy and rounded it out with some long navy opera gloves to give it some elegance. I paired the cloudy dress with long billowing cloud-like hair and added some armor-inspired accent jewelry to mirror Venus and play into the sisters concept a bit. I also wanted to use some round shape language here and there so I also gave her three buns with some little metal hair accessories kind of inspired by Padme's weird hair cages from the 
the beginning of episode 2, and I also added some weird dangly earrings to the Halo crown piece to suggest satellites orbiting the Earth. Speaking of satellites, the Earth does have a moon. So I added a little snow owl companion that probably likes to perch on her shoulder as an allusion to our moon, and I think that's just so stinking cute. Allow me to pat myself on the back for a moment. I very much see my planet characters as being a little pantheon with the sun probably being their Zeus or whatever, so I'd love to do an episode later where I turn other fun space things into characters like the sun, the dwarf planet Ceres, or the Kuiper Belt. I always wanted to participate in the turning planets into characters trend that happened a few years ago, but I never got around to it, so I am just finally living my dreams. Get ready for a lot of space. Plus, this will hopefully give me a chance to do a bunch of fun research about random space facts, which I am very much looking forward to. I might even do an episode where I do like unproven space theories into characters. Do you guys want to see a white hole character? Because I want to make one. Anyways, with that, Earth is finally done. And here are the finished designs. I actually absolutely love them, especially Earth, but I'm pretty darn pleased with how all of them came out. I maybe would have liked to include a few more scientific nods in their designs, but this is the second video I'm making this week, so I just didn't have time to do a ton of research. And on that note, uh, I'm sorry if any of this is inaccurate. Again, not the most time to do a ton of research, but the next batch of planets are going to be really interesting, so I'll definitely do some more research for theirs. So stay tuned for part two, which will probably be out early December. In terms of names for these characters, I'll probably just use the planet names, but feel free to leave suggestions down below anyways. Maybe some of you will persuade me. Instead, feel free to speculate wildly about their dynamics and backstories since I didn't get a chance to really do that in this video. Maybe some of your suggestions will make it into part two. Thank you so much for watching this week's efforts to personify giant floating space rocks. And a very special thank you goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Eloquent Silence, Midnight Nova, John L, Meeks Hunter, Cleos, Blue, In the Galaxy, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Satoni, Sushi McNushi, Megan Penland, Owlian, Bean the Bread, Bobo McFo, Gravity Drop, Hypnos, India, Jessica Dilling, Katie, Michael Twy Cross Panda Pie 365, Refnlings, Silver, Sweet Winter Garden, Welly Kelly, and Will Schmidt. Thank you once again to my patrons. You guys really keep the lights on around here. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, well, that link is in the description. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go engage in my next eccentric costuming project. Bye.